Hey, it's Carl again with Slick Rooster Studio. Uh, a couple of things that I want to unbox for you today. Uh, I don't normally do unboxing videos. I, I think they're, uh, I don't know, I guess some people like to look at them. Um, they're they're kind of silly. To me, it's like a reaction video. It's like, how much time do we have that we're watching videos of other people watching videos? Uh, it just seems a little silly. But this was a good deal I got on Amazon. Um, for a set of... There we go. This is a set of Nick Pro brushes. Um, this is from China. Uh, I get a lot of brushes from China. There's a city in China called Brush City, if I understand it correctly. And that's all they do there is just make brushes. Um, eventually, they're going to get really good at it. Uh, they basically make all the brushes and then just change the labels on them, market them out to other people. You'll see a lot of artists that have my signature brushes, and all they are is just, you know, copies of existing brushes you can buy elsewhere and they've got a different color paint on them and a different label um, and they've got somebody's signature on them and they're you know three times as much uh, these brushes are the I, I looked at them they were $8.99 for a set of 15 they looked a lot like this set of transons that I bought uh, I think I paid $12.99 for six a set of six or something like that with this being the largest one uh, I cut the handle off uh, I, I i don't like long handle brushes and uh you see a lot of people complain when they when they get a, a brush it's like oh the handles are just too long i couldn't use it well you know take a pair of wire cutters snap the handle off the end sand it around and put some paint on it or something um a simple fix so many people are are unable to solve their own problems and you know oh back to amazon it goes because they're expecting for 8.99 a, a set of brushes to come perfectly but even with that said, I only trimmed a couple of, like an inch off of this one and maybe an inch and a half off the other one uh, to get them down to where they're the same length as, you know, the brushes that I that I normally use. Uh, even that's a, li a little long. Uh, just the more name brand expensive brushes. This feels natural to me when I'm painting. I'm not doing a lot of big far away work where I need a long handle like with oil painting, uh, working on upright canvases, things like that. Okay, enough about the brush length. Uh, so yeah, I saw these, and I think that they're boy, that does look similar. Um, so of course, it's rock hard because it's full of um, uh, xanthan gum or or gum arabic or something, whatever they put on there to protect the tip, which is fine. Uh, that needs to soak for a minute. Uh, these transcend ones, and I believe this is the same thing, same color handle and everything else, just a different label on these say Nick Pro, these say transcend, um, all made in China, all made in Taiwan. Uh, um, kudos if you get the movie reference from that. These remind me a lot of Princeton Neptunes, which uh, I really like these brushes a lot. They're a synthetic squirrel, uh, they're real soft. They hold a ton of paint, uh, and they're pretty expensive. Uh, this is one of my favorite all-time brushes. I've had this thing for a decade. Um, when I when I ordered it and paid for it, it came and they had crammed the little the little brush protector thing on here in such a way that it had bent back. You can see there, maybe possibly, it had bent back a bunch of the bristles. And I called and complained that it it, it just looked like one of those. Remember those guys on the pencils you used to have, and you do that to them, and they'd go. Whoop. It looked like one of those. Um, and I've since trimmed it down, and I'm still using it, but they, they were very apologetic and knocked the price back to like $5 or something, which is crazy. This is I think it's like a $60 quill um, list price. Uh, at any rate, these uh, are also synthetic, and I'm not... There's there's I like the big one because, you know, as a mop type of a thing, I can still get a pretty... Let me get some paint out, and I'll show you. This is, you know, cotton watercolor paper here. Standard, regular, uh, I think this is, Dan yeah, this is Daniel Smith paint. And now, I don't really have a mixing area that I can splash around with a brush this size in, but you can get, it just holds a ton of paint. I can, I could cover this whole paper just about one dip, but you can also get real fine lines out of them uh, 
but you see what it's doing there. It's dumping all of its paint, um, which is indicative of a of a synthetic brush. Now, a natural hair brush, each bristle, each hair has follicle. I don't know if it's follicles. It's it's got little feathers that stick out on it, and they cling to the water and the the paint, and they don't let it come all rushing down as soon as it makes contact in like a capillary form. The like when I touch it, it just is a big bead of of paint here. Um, the same thing with the small one. Again, beautiful, beautiful brushes. I think I paid more for this brush than I paid for that entire set. I know I did, and this entire set of brushes. Uh, not to say that that's wrong. Uh, the Princeton Neptunes are nice brushes. They got the copper ferrule, and they're just they're pretty. They're a pretty brush, uh, but they're not, you know, magical. You still got to learn how to paint with them. Um, you can run the you can run the paint out of them and get it, get nice feathered fine lines with them, but you know you've got to run the paint out of them to get that. Uh, natural hair brushes you don't have to do that. You can get a nice a nice controlled flow and still have fine lines with a uh, well, gosh, just about any uh, oh, that I won't say that with with a good Kalinsky brush, uh, sable brush, or even weasel brushes, uh, even some horsehair brushes. This is a uh, uh, creative mark rhapsody also with a trimmed handle oh, oh i trimmed the handle on a expensive brush well whatever um you know you flip the water out of the point you've got a, you've always got a good point with these and see the lines you can get with that when you touch it down it doesn't dump a bunch of paint all at once there's this it's a natural hair brush and i'm sorry to all the PETA people out there uh I'm glad I got them. I've got a bunch of them, and I'm not going to give them up. Uh, I'm sorry that the weasels are being mistreated or whatever happens in Siberia where they get the Kalinsky hair from. Uh, but this tool has not been replicated by a synthetic brush ever. Um, you just can't do do the same. I mean, you can, you can, but it's a lot more work, and it's not as consistent. Um, so best tool for the job. Uh, yeah, I'm going to keep using them. That's, that's just me. You can throw a can of red paint in my face when I walk out of the Waldorf or whatever, but I'm going to keep using fur brushes. Now, when I have the opportunity to get synthetic brushes like this Transcend, okay, remember what I did with the, uh, with the, the Princeton. I'll do that same thing with this Transcend and what I hope these Nick Pros are, and still gets the dump, but honestly, it's just as good as the Princeton, and I paid $8.99 for a set of 15 of these things, um, so, and they hold a ton of water, you can get a nice dry brush effect with them, uh, you can get the nice feathering when the, when the brush is, you know, running low in water and it's dried out. I have heard uh, complaints that these don't hold their hold their tips for, you know, ever, uh, which uh, is, you know, it's a valid complaint, but it's a $2 brush, $27 brush that I've had for 10 years and have, you know, if you take care of your Kalinsky brushes, they will last you a lifetime. Um, but I can get... You know the same action out of this as I do out of this animal friendly one uh and if it wears down, I mean I've got these that have worn out too the the Princeton's wear out I mean God, it feels like the same bristles. these are maybe a little softer, but uh that, that one's also a little longer, so it's hard to it's hard to tell but at any rate, hopefully this one is well it's getting softer working that uh that gum Arabic out of there sometimes is kind of a pain. I'm glad they put it in there. It keeps the it keeps the brush safe while it's in transit. I need to keep holding this like a dummy. All right, so this is the new one. This is the old one I've had for quite a while. And I would venture to say, looking at those, yeah, that's the same brush. Um, 
And that one's still got a pretty good tip on it, too. I've used it a lot. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that is a nice brush for, this is the largest one in the set of 15. Yeah, I'm sold. This is a fantastic deal on Amazon. Uh, I'll put the link in the description um, down below. People always point to their screen and like there's never anything there that pops up. Uh, I'll just, I'll put a link in the description and I'll stop at that. I'm not going to try to be clever with my production skills and, and then end up, you know, borking it at the end. So not going to go too more crazy about this. Uh, um, I'm glad to see that, yeah, this is $8.99 for 15 of them. That's a dang good deal for these brushes. I'm going to use one for the next thing I got to unbox, which is the, the, uh, that'll work. Now look at the, look at the point on that. That is really nice. Um, so the next thing I got to unbox, I, I have, how oh, half a dozen sets of Arteza watercolor pencils. And I really wish that I would have limbered some of them up before I started this video because I've got them all stacked underneath of stuff right now. Um, if you hear these big cracking noises when I'm doing this, you'll know what just happened. Uh, I'm still in the process of, of organizing my studio to make videos. If you could see right now, I think I've got five different booms and overhead tripods and lights, and, and I still haven't got it all sorted out. But I believe in here, yep, I've got a bunch of Arteza watercolor pencils, so I can use those for, I'll leave those out too. Well, sorry. Okay, so this is pretty exciting as well. I'm going to pause the video and get a drink real quick, and I, I feel like everything's falling around me, so I'm going, to, I'm going to fix it real quick and be right back. All right, I'm back and semi-reorganized. Uh, next thing I got is I haven't I didn't see really any reviews on these yet, uh, so I figured I would do one as I unbox it. It just came in the mail today. Uh, I've heard, well, I read good things about them from the few uh, reviews I could get. This is Kalur, uh watercolor pencil. Uh, it's a set of 120. I'll put a link to these uh, in the description as well. Oh, I uh, wasn't supposed to cut that off. Nah, whatever. Uh, from what I could tell in the pictures, these are a direct competitor to Arteza watercolor pencils. Uh, boy, they come packed really well. That's that's amazing. It's in a box um, with some socks. Uh, sorry. Dr. Seuss brain here. Uh, completely wrapped in foam. Oh, cool. It's got a it's got a swatch card. Wow, it's got an enormous swatch swatch card. Uh with very tiny, tiny little blocks, but still pretty cool. Um Yeah, we'll look into that later. Boy, that looks exactly like that, uh, I should have dug it out. I've got a, I've got a set of 120 uh, Arteza watercolor pencils right over there, buried under a pile of things. Um, looks very much the same. Boy, it wouldn't surprise me if they use this. Which way does that go? Yeah, if they use the same artist for the the art on the tin there. This is a nice set. Not uh, again. Uh, you see in the video there, $28.99 for a set of 120 watercolor pencils. And these are, well, at least the advertisement says they are four millimeter lead, which is amazing. That's, that's like a, that's like the Albert Durer's. I mean, that's, that's really good stuff. It's the same, I believe, as Arteza. Um, oh, wow. It comes with brushes and a, and a random 
foam thing. I guess maybe that's to keep the middle of the lid from smashing down on the pencil. Um, very impressive packaging. Best I've seen yet. Uh, gosh. All, from a anywhere. I think my, my Durr set wasn't packed that well. Um, and I got that from Dick Blick or, or, or Jerry's Autorama somewhere. Ah. It's a, it's a, you know, they're cheap, cheap nylon brushes or Taclon or whatever that is. Um, good for, to throw into the, the junk drawer for, for glues and other things. Clearly, no, no attempt at organizing. Uh, it's, it's a, a $28 set of 120 pencils. That's, that's like, that might even be less than 25 cents a pencil. I'm not going to do the math because it's got to be close. But with tax, I think I, I think it was 30 something. Boy, they just keep going. Um, and it's got the same RTs. That, that they give you these trays, but they're so thin. I've had them like pop before and just throw pencils everywhere and they just explode. Uh, but, you know, it's a $28 set of pencils. Wow. Those are definitely four millimeter lids. I will use, I will grab a couple that I can tell just by looking at it that the lids are not centered all the way. Um, but this is a problem that a lot of companies have. Uh, Prismacolor, after they moved to Mexico and just destroyed their credibility, uh, has had a lot of this kind of problem as well. Um, the the off center leads and those things i mean unless you have a a very particular type of pencil sharpener i'm going to hold on thing yeah with prismacolors you'll just you'll just eat them up in the pencil sharpener uh trying to get a point out of them whereas arteza um they're a little harder let's actually let's take a look at one of these compared to I don't use a lot of violet, so of course that's the one I I grabbed. Um, well, yeah, let me grab this guy. Man, those are very similar. Now the Artezas say expert on them, so I mean, right there you're going to be able to draw better. Um, the color, I mean, man, they look the same. Not the, not the color, obviously, but the construction and just the I would venture a guess to say that these are made in the same exact factory. Well, I'll leave that one out. Uh, I'll pick a couple other ones just to just to have out. Um, the Arteza colored pencils I have, or the watercolor pencils I have not been happy with, as far as watercolor pencils. They're they're nice, you know. They lay down the the color really well, but man, the dissolvability or rewetability, whatever you want to call it. It's just awful. Um, it's really hard to get them to dissolve a, a dissolve the line. Purplish gray. I don't know what that is, but I probably won't use that much. We'll use that as an experiment. Um, some crazy greens. I don't use I don't use a lot of crazy greens. We'll use a couple of those. That's a lot of colors for, for $28.99. Whatever, get back in there. Boy, it's hard to find. Like I don't want to use up stuff that I I will use in a in a drawing. A drawing. Prussian blue. We'll use that. And we'll use a pink because I never use those. Wow, it is it is impressive the amount of pencils you get. There's a lot of stacking back in there. You got a white. I'm saving all of the yellows. These these sets never have enough yellows. I'll use. I would like to have one whole tray of yellow. And tell you what, keep about half of those pinks that you send out that are all that. Man, you look at the the color chart. You got forty seven different pencils of the same shade of unusable neon pink like this guy right here 
uh, I guess kids would like it or something. Oh, yeah, this is Opera Rose, so it's probably that same fugitive garbage like they put in the in the tube, the watercolor paint that everybody, oh, it's so bright, it explodes in the wash, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's fugitive. Look at it next week, it's going to be gray. Uh, sorry, that, was a, that got really ranty quickly. <laughs> um, so let's look at this stuff on, well, let's see, where am I going to put this now? Uh, my kingdom for a flat spot somewhere. That's kind of been my rant for, well, my whole life, really. I'm kind of a clutter bug. So, I don't want to get these mixed up with the Arteza ones. Oh. oh. Okay, so this has got... Oh, no, it's got the color names on them. Prussian blue makes sense to me. Grenadine light. Oh, what the hell is that? It's, I mean, I know what grenadine is. And, well, this is a lighter color than what grenadine would be in a bottle. Um, forest green. Okay, I guess that makes sense. Purplish gray. Well, this is pretty self-explanatory. Violet deep. All right, so at least they're not doing crazy stuff like naming these colors after people like Bob's Orange. Oh, what does that mean? Um, so that's good that at least for those ones I've seen, there are probably a couple in there that have uh, some wonky colors. But I'm interested to see what these things do. Uh, let's just grab one. First of all, we're going to sharpen it to see how it goes in the sharpener. It advanced and stopped. And it's pointy. So we'll look at a... We'll do the same with a... Arteza. Advanced and stopped. Yeah, you can see the Arteza is also off-center. Wait, is that the... Yeah, that's the Arteza. So, actually, this purplish-gray one is pretty good. That's as good as any Albert Durer is. I mean, as far as the the core lining up with the casing. You can see the edge, the, yeah, the join on the, the casing there. You can get your fingernail in there. I, I would imagine that these are susceptible to splitting if you leave them in a moist area, um, which, you know, don't do that. Uh, pretty common sense, you know, don't, don't misuse your tools and they won't fall apart on you. All right, so let's have a look at this. It's purplish gray. Oh, yeah, it's definitely hard. Um, this does not feel soft like an Albert Durer. Um, it's got a chalk on paper kind of a feel to it. Uh, I, well, one of the reasons I can't use dry pastels is I get the, the heebie-jeebies when I feel that, yeah, I just, oh, I feel that thing drag across the dry paper and it's got that, it's like nails on a chalkboard for me. I've actually got goosebumps just talking about that, that feeling. It's for whatever reason, I've never been able to, to use that. And it's just a weird, a weird feeling. So let's do that next to an Arteza. You see, I use now as you can see, but there's a lot of particles and flakes there. Okay, so now the Arteza also has it feels brittle, but boy, the color comes off of there really nice. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know what? I'm going to sharpen up a different color. That purplish gray is really light. This is this one should be nice and juicy, like that Arteza purple leaf. Yeah, a little off center, but not not awful. Still brittle. Not not as good as the well. Man, that's that's a tough. It's harder. It's harder than the Arteza. I can I can feel it. Which isn't. I mean, that's not a bad thing. It might mean it's you know the tips are less susceptible to to breaking while you're you're bearing down them. I don't know. That's boy. That's chipping off real well. Well, I don't know if that's really well or excessively. Um, but we'll see. Let's start our new brush here and let's see how they rewet. Now, the Arteza, depending on which color you have, it's always kind of a crapshoot about. Yeah, see, look at it doesn't. It really doesn't want to rewet or dissolve under my under my brush. And see how it leaves the pencil marks there. Uh, 
I mean, it'll eventually wear down. It's just by the time it does, it starts feeling like you're breaking the paper down. Um, you're getting the pulp, and this is this is high quality watercolor paper, so it's got good sizing, and it still feels like I'm damaging the paper by the time I'm able to scrub through that Arteza stuff. So let's have a look at these guys. Yeah, I would be willing to bet that these are the same pencils in a different box. Which is okay, because, I mean, this set of Kalours is almost half the price of the Artezas. Yeah, that's the same stuff. Uh, it, it gets kind of gummy in the paper. It doesn't dissolve quickly at all. Still usable. That's I mean, uh, again, this isn't this isn't a showstopper, especially at that price. Um, <clears throat> let me grab my my Albert Durer. Which, well, this clearly not what these are, but you know what? I've got a purple one right here. This is an ink tents. Let's go ahead and put an ink tents square down there. And I mean, those of you that have used these, you know what these are about. Now they're, they're not as they're not light as light fast as a lot of colored pencils, but Man, they are fun to use. They are just vibrant and really good quality. Uh, I won't go as far as that. I'll, I'll say they're, it's a good experience using them. I mean, they just explode when you get them wet. I mean, look at that. Look at how much color. And it's almost difficult to not put too much color down. They're, they're, they're so... Or they're just crazy how vibrant they get and how powerful they are. Uh, I mean, that right there is just night and day difference. You see how washed out these look? Um, yeah, Ink Tense is just, they're a dramatic, dramatic pencil. I, I love them a lot. Um, but we're not here to look at those. Ow! And we're not here to poke our fingers on them either. Uh, we will grab the outdoors and find up near the purple. Now, the Durr, I mean, these are Arteza, especially. I mean, that's just a blatant knockoff. Uh, same design same it's 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 almost disgusting uh how much they're trying to to emulate the albic durs now the albic dur the the case is thicker it feels more substantial um this one is not centered as well as it could be but watch the watch the difference here boy that's nice when you when you lay it down it's just silky smooth it's not busting a bunch of brittle tips off. Um, keep that stuff. Yeah, that's just that's a much bigger pencil, bigger than the Arteza, and bigger than the the Kalurs. and the Kalurs too. It's it's not as it's not as blatant, uh, but it is clearly meant to be a knockoff. They're all four millimeter cores. Yeah, uh, it's twenty eight ninety nine. Even even this over here. Now, the problem with these is with this paper in particular. Well, with any watercolor paper, you don't get a lot of goes with 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 uh, layering uh, the Arteza pencils or or probably the Kaluers. With they're so hard, they bust through the sizing, they damage the surface of the paper, and you see how it sort of soaked in. Um, Now the Albic Durer is much like the the ink tense. It's just so heavy on the pigment, very very uh, soluble, and it doesn't. It's not scratching the surface when you lay them down, so it doesn't feel like it's damaging the paper. Uh, you just get a lot more color out of that, regardless of of the color. And, and I'm sure that 
Okay, so there's that the purple we did there, the purplish gray or whatever that color was we did there. Um, or sorry, this was the violet deep. We'll try the forest green. Again, it's nice that they that they sharpen. Um, if you're familiar with Prismacolor's very thin, the, the name is very thin, B E R I T H I N, very thin pencils. They're a colored pencil that's a, it's a harder composition than the Prismacolor Premier. Um, it's made for finer lines because you know with the Prismacolor Premier, it's like a crayon. If if you got a sharp point on it, as soon as you touch it to the paper, it's going to snap. Um, this feels to me like the Prismacolor Verithin. So does the Arteza. Yeah. Oh, sorry. That that was the uh, that was the Albert Durer. That feels the same, but stuff comes off underneath. Yeah, that's that's interesting that they feel the same physically. Yeah, they all have that same degree of hardness. I don't. Let me. Sharpen the Albert Durer one. And I just sharpened that one. And I'll resharpen this one. All right. So oh, that's the Arteza or Arteza. I think they put a decent amount of pressure time to break that. Yeah, the. The Durer definitely broke easier, which I guess would mean it's softer. That broke about the same as the, about the same as the Arteza. Um, yeah, things all over the place are going to reactivate in the, on the floor and in my shoes and then on the carpet in the house. And... That actually, this one feels better. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe the purples are hard. I don't know. Makes sense, but that one that one felt a little better laying it down. It still has that waxy, gooey kind of a feel to it, uh, like the ink tents and the Durer when you wet them. It's almost like a watercolor wash that it 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 feels like water and just pigment in it. Where this stuff, it's almost like you're sliding an oil around or something. Um, but again, twenty eight dollars. Uh, I think my set of one hundred and twenty durs was. I think I was pushing two hundred dollars, um, and that was close to ten years ago. Do you get the same? I don't know. You don't. You don't get the same feeling when you use them. You're not. You're not getting that pull and and. I don't know if you can see it. It it beads up. At the edge of where I'm scrubbing there, it like builds a little berm up. It doesn't. It doesn't liquefy out into a wash like a, a well, an expensive watercolor pencil does. Oh, imagine that. It's twenty eight dollars a set. So, I mean, honestly, are they usable? Sure. You're not going to... This is like a, a scholastic grade watercolor paint. Trying to use that to learn how to use a professional artist quality paint. It's just, they don't behave the same. Um, you can make nice stuff with either thing. But one doesn't directly lead to the other. This is not going to behave the same as the Dur or the ink pens or even the Derwent. Um, the the Derwent watercolor pencil. I got a kind of a love hate relationship with those because the first set I had was one of the old ones with the turquoise colored barrels, and it was abysmal. It was it was like this. Um, it was worse than this actually. They were terrible watercolor pencils, and then they reformulated. And they're okay now. Uh, nothing to write home about. It's no super color. 
uh, even the, gosh, there's there's a couple of brands out there that behave better for a lot less money than uh, than what you're gonna pay for a real set. But it's twenty eight ninety nine for a hundred and twenty pencils. Um, is this usable? I mean, can you can you use them to to paint flowers? Sure. Uh, can you color in squares? Sure. Uh, can you use it for adult coloring and painting? Sure. Would I... I would use this in a sketchbook. This is an Arteza, by the way, along with the mixing with the the Kahlua. Yeah, I, I don't know. Would I, would I use this for a real piece of art? No, I would use I would use the Durer and I would actually use the ink tents and just make it known to my customers that by the way these are these are made using ink tents pencils uh because there's no other pencil on the planet that behaves the way they do and they're really really good but don't you know don't hang your painting in in, in the desert or in like a south facing don't be an idiot with your artwork or it's just that shouldn't have to be said, but, you know, it's, you have to cover, cover for the ignorant sometimes. Yeah, so I'm trying to, just even dipping that in the water. That doesn't, I mean, it eventually starts to dissolve, but, you know, the, the dirt you dip in the water and it's immediately just like a brush. After these have soaked, now it's still not the same. Does not feel the same. Again, I would sketch with that. That'd be fun. I mean, it'd be fun for somebody. And learning how to use watercolors. Uh, sorry, watercolor pencils. Yeah, it, I mean, you get the experience. When you, when you work with these and learn how to make something beautiful with these, and then somebody gifts you a set of Albert Durs and you use these, it's like somebody has opened up a window and let in the fresh air. Um, but... $28 a set, you know? Like, if I drop this on the floor and run over it with my chair and it breaks, I don't care. If I drop this thing, uh -huh, uh -huh. I don't even like dropping it, you know? It's, it's You don't want to drop your pencils, but uh, that's, uh, I'm getting going overboard with this, this example of dropping things. Um, is it usable? Sure. Uh, let's see what the Yeah, the, the pigment's weak in comparison to, you know, expensive pencils. But $28 a set. And they, they seem to be fairly new. The Kahlua colored pencils have been out for quite a while, and they've got a great following, lots of great reviews. Um, and the 18 reviews, I think, that are on these right now are pretty good. Uh Yeah, the side by side with uh, with Durer, I don't think anybody's gonna look at that and go, yeah, they're the same. They just they feel different. <clears throat> Bottom line, Durer ink tents just a, a a whole different class. Arteza at I think man the 120 set for Arteza was at seventy two dollars forty dollars I don't know, it was a lot, um, and it looks nice it comes in a great tin, uh, and then you open it up and you start using them and it's it's this it's the same pencil, just like you know these are the same brush just different labels on them, same same place in China makes these pencils I'm almost guaranteeing it um, I can't prove it for sure. Uh, but I would, 
you know, I would say it in court, that's for sure. Uh, given the fact that I've got all three, and I know that these are not made there. And I know that these, either one of these is not made where these are made. Um, but these are $200 a set. These are $28 a set. Um, the Artezas are also a good deal. Uh, they're less expensive than the Albert Durs. Uh, for the way that they behave, uh, disappointing for me because I'm, you know, I, I've i got Reeves and I've got, oh man, what was the other? There was another company that was very similar to what we're seeing here. It was Reeves and Fantasia or something like that. Uh, same place, built both pencils, different color paint on the on the on the casing, same pencil. But those pencils dissolve all the way away. Uh, gosh, the, some of the koh stuff, some of the Russian stuff, or Czechoslovakian, uh, dissolves all the way away. Now, it still gets that kind of that weird slimy, it feels like a little puddle of filler that you're pushing across the paper. Uh, but they're they're cheap. Um, kind, of the, kind of the same idea with these. I didn't try the Arteza. I think they make a woodless watercolor pencil like, like the koh North do. Uh, I didn't buy those and try them. I, I got these and I was, you know, okay, that's that's a good good enough. I don't need to see any more than that. Um, I mean, this is their cocoa. It's one of their darkest browns and there goes the flakes and stuff. And it just, you can't, it's really hard to get the darkness, the richness in the Arteza watercolor pencils. It just, it seems like it just sort of fades away. Um, and they also dry with they they dry a little waxy feeling. Um, well, these are pretty good over here. But layering is, is very hard with them, at least on watercolor paper, printmaking paper, any any paper that has a soft core to it. Uh, it's going to be like a Bockingford watercolor paper. I think would be okay. That's a real tough paper. Um, Strathmore paper is actually it's got it's pretty tough. Um, but, you know, I wouldn't try to layer back over that again. This I would, um, uh, like you can feel the tooth of the paper where this stuff is dry. No, not there. But yeah, there and there. And especially here where I went back over it several times with the, with the both, both brands. Am I disappointed? No, $28. Uh, even just to have, you know, sketching paper where you can, where you can, Go and, and sketch and and play with ideas. And I'm not I'm not coloring very hard here. It's still a it's still a a good sketching pencil. Yeah, that's I'll I'll use these for sketching all day long and be happy about it. Grab a little bigger brush. <laughs> You know what these would be really good for? Um, sketching prior to a watercolor painting. I mean, because you still... I like the look of, of the graphite pencil drawing before you before you paint a painting. And still being able to see the line work there. To me, that's kind of a neat look. Uh, these have some of that, but you can also scrub it away. Like, normally I wouldn't paint the bottom of a building especially when it's sitting in a field or whatever because that just makes it look like I've dropped a Lego on the grass or something um, so yeah you can you can almost wash it all away I don't want to mess my brush up scrubbing but um, yeah we'll make some we'll make some horrific colored grass out here bright green grass and we'll do a, a dark blue shadow 
behind the building, accentuate the under eaves a little bit. You know, and I could be using the complementary color there and, and, and making a dark, like a, like a black or a gray shadow tone there. Really doesn't like to reactivate after I get to put it on wet paper. It's like it binds into the fibers there. This is actually a good paper to be doing this on. You can see how the pencil, it doesn't come out of the, the paper fibers. It doesn't want to dissolve all the way. That's so why you're left with some brush marks. But still, I mean, that's not undoable. I'll, I'll use some of the RTs in here with it since they're essentially the same pencil, I believe. Yeah, that's a hard pencil. As soon as that paper is wet, it just, you have to let the paper dry. You know, you can get some darks, but as soon as that paper is wet, it's that, it gets that slimy wax thing going. See how they blend together. That's an Arteza, and this is a... The color. You see the... The chips of stuff flying off of there. See, I can pick up all of the pigment and roll it along in that that little puddle of filler and just drag it all the way over. And then it just disappears into the Prussian. Yeah. Um, this is one of those things that, you, I mean, that would make a nice stormy sky color right there. Nothing wrong with that. It would take a minute to to figure out, you know, which of these pencils I like working together. Uh, well, that's, I mean, really, that's with any any art supply that you use. You're going to have to learn how to use it. And I'm sure that if I took some time, I could make some really nice stuff with these pencils. Um, I could also take some time with the more expensive stuff uh, and, you know, really screw something up. Uh, it comes down to learning how to use the tools that you got. And, you know, that's with these, with these Prang watercolor, you know, the cheap, the cheap uh, stuff that I've been using on videos lately. <clears throat> it just takes a minute to, to figure out how to use them, you know. So, at the end of the unboxing thing here, the Nick Pro brushes for eight ninety nine, absolute score. Uh, you could, if you're just starting out, buy that set of watercolor brushes, and it will get you through a year um, while you're learning how to do stuff. And honestly, you can do just as well with these brushes as you will with a $300 Series 7 or something insane like that. Um, yeah. Uh, excellent brushes. Cannot recommend them enough. Wait, is that what I want to say? That doesn't seem like what I want to say. Uh, when I do the when I do my review for, for Amazon, I, I don't believe I'll, I'll say something like that. I cannot recommend these enough. So... Oh. Would I would I buy the brushes again? Absolutely, I probably will buy the brushes again as I wear them out or go through them, or just want more for for you know in the shop or whatever. Um, it's cheaper by far than the Transon, and it's the same brush. Uh, would I buy the Arteza pencils again? No, not at the price that I paid for them. No way. Uh, would I buy these again? Absolutely. Uh, for 28 bucks, you can go through that that container of 120, pick out the colors that you actually want, and I don't use a lot of candy purple and and princess pink. 
stuff in my landscapes. Uh, I don't do a lot of florals. So I end up with a surplus of, of pencils that are kind of this color. Uh, and I give them to, I know people that do lots of, uh, uh, you know, adult coloring books and things like that. And they're super happy to get them. They just love to have something because, you know, they burn through them where they're just coloring squares and blocks and paisleys and butterflies and, and just coloring their stress away. Uh, so, yeah, you know, wrap them up in a rubber band and say, here, I got these for you. You're still, you know, if you've only ended up with 60 pencils from from that set of 120, that's still a great price on on pencils that you'll use, you know, and like I could continue, I, I could find a paper that I could continue to use, even when this is dry, I don't think it's going to be, it feels like the tooth of the paper is kind of wiped out there. Um, but, you know, for, for doing something like that and starting a, starting a, a watercolor with it, those are, those are great. You know, I mean, you can, you get a, a nice shadow color going and you don't have to worry about the tooth of the paper that's more shadow than i would ever want on that particular piece unless i was doing a really dramatic scene or something you pull some of that off you still got the texture of the watercolor pencil underneath so that's cool uh yeah working in conjunction with with watercolor paints absolutely usable uh, because realistically, you're not looking for light fastness or anything out of your, out of your underpainting or whatever you want to call it, your pre, your pre-draw thing there. The main, the main portion of the, the main watercolor paint is going to, is going to carry the look and feel of the, of the piece. Sorry, I'm getting a little distracted there. Uh, <laughs> as soon as they start painting, it's it's time to go to my my happy place and enjoy. But yeah, I would I would use these. I would use some of these. Uh, and and 120 of them, I got plenty to plenty to pick from. Yeah, that's a that's a viable art tool. Um, is it a good a deal as the brushes? Of course not, but you can make stuff with these and dare say even sell it. I I, I would sell something I made with those and used like this because that watercolor I just put over the top of that is gonna last forever. You know, it's high quality watercolor. So yeah, there you have it. My product review of. Two things that I got to unbox for you. Say, hey, look at my stuff. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.